So, okay, Bismillah. Um, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the breezes of Ramadan, I'm so excited to see my, my brothers, mashallah, my sisters. They're already here. Like, look at this. It, we're so lucky to be Muslim. Uh, seriously, we're so lucky to be, we're so lucky to be Muslim. It's, it's the only truth remaining. And you're, you've been invited. And you've grabbed onto it. And that's why you're here right now. And, and it's amazing, right? Assalamu alaikum. And, uh, and so, Islam is submission. Not to yourself. Not the American way, submission to yourself. Okay? By the way, shaitan, every generation, uh, uh, tricks people. And every generation, he has different tricks. This is very important. So, you know... Uh, historically, he tricked people, um, and he said, hey, bury your daughter alive, or your son, and that's a good thing. He tricks people, and the Quran, Allah says, he says, he, he, lahum su'u amalihim. he makes the, their ugly act beautiful to them. And every generation, there's different tricks that shaitan does. So the tricks, the way he told other generations in the past, is not the same trick he's telling us today. Right? And the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing people he doesn't exist. Right? So he told people, he told people, bury your child alive. And people would do that <laughs> and, and they would be, be proud of it. I did something noble. Yay. And people were like, wow, I need to respect that person. He put his daughter under the ground. Wow, what a noble person. Like, Shaitan did that. That's nasty. That's disgusting. That's crazy. Well, what is he tricking us today? that we think is beautiful, but it's actually ugly. Isn't that wild? Isn't that frightening? That we think is beautiful, it's in the air, it's, in, it's accepted by the culture. It's normalized. That it's beautiful and honorable, but it's actually disgusting, putrid, demonizing, this ugly, what is it? And for, for, our, for, our, uh, for our time, I propose that it's individualism. <laughs> it's actually individualism, right? S serve yourself, worship yourself, submit to yourself, surrender to yourself, surrender. You're entitled to being comfortable in every moment. You're, you're entitled to look perfect and eat perfect and perfect vacations and perfect this. You've been tricked that you're in paradise. It's not, you're still in dunya. Dunya... I'll keep it, you know, it's, we're not in paradise. You, he tells you that you have your freedom. You're free. You're, you're not. You're a slave to God. <laughs> Obey God. Okay, so he takes this wonderful concept of freedom, distorts it, distorts it and takes it to an extreme, right? And then he tells you your feelings to define for you right and wrong. This is all based on individualism. Our feelings are important, but they don't define right and wrong. And then, and this is all related to individualism. And then, and then he comes and he tricks us, and he says that, uh, ah, yeah, that you need so much personal space that you just doomed yourself, you alienated yourself, and made yourself lonely. And anyone who breaches your feelings, or who breaches your personal space, or who breaches uh, your feelings, you're always the victim, victim mindset. These are the tricks of Satan today, right? So it's, in other words, submit to myself, right? And, and religion is an alarm clock. It wakes us, up, wakes us up from our slumber. And Ramadan is one of those beautiful, amazing moments with this divinely designed religion where we're, we're invited. We came from God. We're returning to God. And in this small temporary period, you know, there's like not a page in the Qur'an that doesn't talk about the temporary nature of this world. We weren't even made. Do you guys know we weren't even made for this world? We're not made for this world. We're just here visitors. We're just, at best, we're strangers or visitors. At best. We came from God. We're returning to God. And we're here for a few years. Be with God. Right? So Allah sent us this amazing messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu al habib and he sent us this amazing message called Islam to tell us in between our beginning and our end, hey, connect with God. And it's called Islam. And don't surrender to yourself in this satanic, demonic way where shaitan's tricking us, right? Right? And instead, submit and surrender to God. Right? And Ramadan is one of those ways. Now, I didn't come to talk about that. But I was passionate and wanted to share that anyways. <laughs>
because <laughs> I'm excited about that, right? We came to talk about, but it's related, right? We came to talk about preparing for Ramadan, which is, inshallah, Allahumma balighna Ramadan, say ameen. May we reach Ramadan safely and may it be beautiful. اللهم إنا نسألك خير هذه الليلة فتحها ونصرها ونورها وبركتها وهداها اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما ربنا هب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهي لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم يسر وعين يا كريم وافتح بالحق إنك أنت الفتاح العليم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم uh, I need some help can we uh, distribute these papers I need everyone to have a paper uh, thank you I need everyone to have a paper, um, and here are pens as well. Uh, there are more pens there, and there's more papers there. I need everyone to have a paper, everyone to have a pen. We're going to do something beautiful. I have about 15 minutes remaining, and it's going to be amazing. You're, we're, you're, making, you're, making, you're making a beautiful thing. You know why? Because scientific studies have shown if you write down... If you write down your dreams, if you write down your aspirations, if you write down your plans and goals, you are about 300% more likely to actually achieve them. Takbir. It's amazing. That's all you have to do is write, write it down. And you're about 300% or something like that, more likely to achieve them. Okay? So, now this paper... Okay, I need a board. Nice and pre prepared. The ummah is rising. This is a sign. This is, wallahi, this is a sign. <laughs> Seriously. The ummah is doing good. There's a beautiful uh, verse in the Quran that says, uh, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 218, I think. Masatum al Basa wal Dara wa Zulzilu. The people, they had ba'sa, dara, and zulzilu. They had difficulty, they had tribulation, and they had earthquakes. Until, or they were shaken, until they said, when is the help of Allah coming? Indeed, the help of Allah is near. So the ummah just had difficulty, had tribulation, and just had... Earthquakes. So the help of Allah is near. Say Amin. Okay. So Al Khair Muqbil, inshaAllah. All right. So I have 14 minutes. Okay. So we want to benefit from this this notion, this concept. Uh, I can't see the board. I want everyone to see it. Um, that if you write down your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, you're about 300% more likely to achieve them. Do you know your goals, your dreams, your aspirations? Can you list them off? One, two, three, four, five? Do you know them? Because if not, then what are you doing? <laughs> Eating, sleeping, good. I mean, yeah, that's enjoyable, right? Alhamdulillah, and it's beautiful, and you can get rewarded for that. But we want to dream. We want to be dreamers. I'm not afraid to dream, one of my teachers said. May Allah bless him. Say, Amin. I'm not afraid to dream, and neither are we. We want to dream. Your potential. Your ability, your pricelessness with God. What can you do? Who can you be? Seriously. Seriously. Every human being has amazing potential if they actually know that they have that potential. And if they don't know it, then they don't have it. And you have it. Every human being has it. Right? And so we want to dream. Okay. So on this page... This is my page. We're gonna we're gonna put it we're gonna put it landscape, okay? Landscape, okay? So you know we put it landscape. We put it sideways like that, okay? And we are going to break it into eight into eight uh, cubes, eight sections, okay? Now this is you. This is you. You're defining yourself. And I'm going to ask you eight questions, and you're going to fill in eight sections. Okay? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All right? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I 
I love how this this was actually set up, body, mind, soul. Amazing, mashallah. Okay, write these uh, write these down. I want to make sure I don't mess up. Bismillah. Bismillah, write these down. And interestingly, this roadmap actually encompasses the previous two sessions that you guys did. Here it is. Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one, I am taking license to tell you your first dream. <laughs> and it is to be a wali. Everyone write that down. I am taking advantage of my teacher role and uh, telling you your first dream, right? And it is to be a wali. It is to be a wali. It is to be a wali. It is to be a saint. It is to be a friend of God. Ooh. What else is there? What else do you need? Well, how amazing would that be? What else? Oof. Forget a billion dollar lottery. Forget being uh, gorgeous and pretty and handsome. Forget having a, being a VP at a big company. You're a wali? Oh, how amazing. You know, there was this father, and he actually took his son out one day. His son was like 15 years old, and he took him out. And they were walking in the streets, and he said, Son, you see the garbage on the floor there? He said, Yes, Father. He said, If I knew that the pleasure of God was found in picking up garbage, Son, I would raise you to be a garbage man. <laughs> he said, Okay, I would raise. So we all want to be a wali. That's our first goal. Yes? Um, I asked one of my teachers one time if it was permissible to ask. That we can be a wali. Yeah. And he said, a wali of who? A wali of Allah or Shaykh Ah, okay. Be specific. Yeah, thank you. So be specific. <laughs> yeah, that's actually uh, that's a good point. Thank you. So we want to be a wali of God. <laughs> be a wali of God. Right? In the awliya, Allah says in the Quran, the awliya, the wali, right? Uh, and uh, the wali or the waliya or the awliya la khawfun alayhim wa la yahzanun they have no fear and no sadness and what does that mean? that means they don't fear the future and they're not sad about the past they're in their moment and in their moment they're with God that's the wali Right? They're in their moment and they're in their moment. They're in their God. So, so okay. So, I'm, I'm taking the liberty to, I know your first dream, it's all to be a wali, right? And on a serious note, if this wasn't your dream, consider it and explore it. Because what else is there? Why are we here? What, what else is going to make us happy? Islam is the recipe to, to be happy. The recipe to be happy. Individualism is the recipe to misery. It's kind of ironic. There's actually the correlation of happiness and thinking about yourself is inversely correlated. So the more, uh, the, the more you think about yourself, the unhappier you are. The less you think about yourself, the happier you are. Right? And so if you empty your heart from yourself and you fill it with others in service of others and God, you're actually a happier person. It's, it's wild. When we think it's the opposite. Oh, you know. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um... Okay, so Bismillah, let's jump into it. I have 10 minutes left. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All right. Now, this one, this first box, I want you to think deeply for a moment. What is, what are, this box, three, dua, what are the three most Desperate. I'm, the key word is desperate. Things that you want from God. There was a woman, she's been married for 16 years, unable to get pregnant. Tried every single medical, 
every single medical procedure to get pregnant with her husband. They were married 16 years, didn't get pregnant. She got pregnant in her 17th year of marriage. My, my wife asked her, what did you do? She said, مَسَكْتِ dua bi Ramadan." She said, I gripped dua in Ramadan. That was her answer. I'm just sharing it with you. There was a man, he was 380 pounds. His whole life he was 380 pounds. When I saw him, he was this beautiful muscle man. And I was like, dude, mashallah. He's like, this is me 10 months ago. And he showed me his picture. 380 pounds. I was like, what happened? He's like, I'll tell you what happened. He's like, He's like, last Ramadan, in the last 10 days, I desperately asked God for three things. It's like, what? He's like, I asked him to lose weight. <laughs> I asked him to, for, for, for me and my wife to get pregnant. They weren't able to get pregnant for like five years. And I asked for, for some third thing. And he's like, all three of them came true. Allahu Akbar. Right? So dua, the key to dua is being desperate. Why? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was promised victory at Badr. But what did he do the night before Badr? He stood up and he raised his hand so high his cloak would fall off. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr would say, Ya Rasulullah, that's enough, that's enough. You, you pray me enough, that's enough. And he'd put his jacket by, or his cloak back on. He carry it's enough. Get some rest. The Sahaba slept and he stood up. Why? Sidq al-Ta'abud. Sidq al-Ta'abud. Ta'abud is, Sidq is showing the truthfulness in his neediness, his neediness. So desperation is the key. And in the Hikam, Ibn Atta'Allah says, if you want gifts from God to come your way, then perfect your spiritual poverty. My desperation. And the opposite is, Man, humans went out of bounds when they saw themselves independent. I don't need God. Independent. Right? That's the opposite. Right? And so I want you now, in the next 60 seconds, to think deeply and desperately when you call God with these three things, your heart just shatters and trembles and feels the closeness of God. What is it? And the reason I want you to do this is not necessarily to get those three things. But I want you to use your want of those three things to get God. <laughs> you see the difference? Does that make sense? I want you to use your desperation in those three things to get God. Because you call on Him. So I want you to write the three things that you want and put them here. Right? And it's confidential, right? If you want to put a keyword, so no one, you know, a symbol, so no one knows what it is that you're thinking about, you can do that. And go ahead, take the next 45 seconds and write it down. Now, these three du'as you are going to make every prayer, every prostration in tarawih. You're going to make these three prayers more than any other prayer. And therefore, your Ramadan will be a Ramadan of connection. Because dua is the core of connecting to God. Dua is the core. Of so you're going to use this desperation, this neediness, to connect with God and make it a Ramadan of connection. Okay? So it's important to identify these. And listen, remember, if you write these down, you're more likely to, to fulfill this and do this. Shaitan's whispering right now. Shaitan's whispering. Oh my God, this guy has seven and a half minutes left. Oh my God, this carpet is green. Oh my God, I want to go eat dinner. Shaitan's whispering. I hope the person next to me takes this seriously. They really need it. You know? So make this a meaningful moment. Make this a meaningful moment, not a forgettable moment. Write these down. Okay? All right. Bismillah. Now we're going to proceed. Now I want you, okay, in the top half of this box in the Quran, I want you to dream. Remember, we're dreaming. I'm not afraid to dream. I want you to write down your high aspiration and goal of how many pages of Quran you're going to read every day in Ramadan. 
How many pages of Quran you're going to read every day in Ramadan? Don't be afraid to dream. Okay? Quran is the greatest form of dhikr. The greatest form of dhikr is reading Quran in prayer. And after that, it's reading Quran outside of prayer. It's the greatest form of dhikr. And dhikr is remembering God. Keeping your tongue moist. Nice, mashallah. What's your name, darling? Mashallah, what's your name? Yes, yes. Iman! How old are you, Iman? Eight! Allahu Akbar! May Allah bless you, Iman. Everyone say Ameen. Look at her, studiously writing. You're going to be a wali. Inshallah, you're going to be a friend of Allah. You want to be a friend of Allah? Isn't that amazing? Take me with you to Jannah, okay? Inshallah. Inshallah. That's right. Made a deal. Iman. MashaAllah. Okay, so I want you to write it down, okay? So you're, you're high, go, I'm going to read. This year I'm going to do 10 khatim. I'm going to do 5 khatim. 100 pages a day. 50 pages a day. 20 pages a day. I want you to dream, okay? Whatever it is, okay? Whatever you write, okay? I'm going to do 40 pages a day. I'm going to do 420 pages a day. Whatever you write, okay? Now, Bismillah. We're proceeding, because I have, I know you guys are looking at your clock, you're like, yeah, six minutes left, okay? Now, tarawih, I want you to dream. How many rakahs of tarawih, how many prayers of tarawih are you going to pray every night? Dream, dream big, think big, okay? How many are you going to do? 20, 12, 8, how many, and this includes night prayer, when you're by yourself. I'm going to pray 40, I'm going to pray 100, every night. How many rakahs are you going to pray? Okay, you're going to pray 100, 100 rakahs, you're going to pray 50 rakahs, okay? How much are you going to pray? Bismillah, write it down, 10 seconds, we're moving forward. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Next box is dhikr down here. Now remember, dhikr is the only thing, this is actually pretty remarkable, the only thing in the Quran that Allah says to do a lot of. It's so amazing. Whenever dhikr is mentioned, Allah says, Kathira, Uthkur Allah dhikran, Kathira, La'alakum tuflihun. Remember Allah abundantly, so you may have victory. It's amazing. So, Kathira, so I want you to dream. How much dhikr are you going to do? And this man, once he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, Islam has become, the rules of Islam have become too, too much in, for me. Tell me one thing to do. And he said, Let your tongue never Stop being moist in dhikr. That's it. Keep your tongue moist in dhikr. And by the way, this is important because when you get tired in Ramadan and you, you know, it's day 10, day 15, you get tired in Ramadan, this is your fallback plan. Just hold those prayer beads. It's your fallback plan. My prayer beads. It's your fallback plan. And intend, intention, I want to regain my energy. I need to eat some ice cream, you know? Just don't go to salt and straw, $13 a pint, you know? They have an endless line, you know, tlif. right? This is your fallback. Your fallback. Dhikr. When you get tired in Ramadan, just keep this. And this is a tool to remind your tongue. Your tongue is a tool to remind your heart. And then, your intention, I need to regain my energy. Okay, so write it down here. Think high. Dream, 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 dream. 500 la ilaha illallah a day. 1,000 astaghfirullah a day. 10,000 salawat a day. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay? Dream. Next. Now this box relates to your body. Taking care of your body. Things about exercise. Things about staying healthy. What, what goals you, do, you need to do to stay healthy with your body. Right? Are you going to do, uh, are you going to walk 20 minutes a day? Are you going to do 100 push-ups a day? Are you going to do, what are you going to do? Write it down here. And dream. Dream. Be that noble, elegant human being. You know, this person once said, uh, this person once said, you know when that like person, they're just like amazing and looks like what they did is a miracle. It looks like a miracle from the outside. He's like, from the inside, it's actually, he did the same little thing every day for, for many days. <laughs> Allah loves most of all the consistent even if small. That's a hadith. Allah loves most of all the consistent even if small. It looks like a miracle from outside, from the inside. He just did the same little thing every day for many days. Okay, so physical. Do your exercise, okay? I'm going to do 100 push-ups. I'm going to walk 30 minutes. Okay. Next, intellectual, right? What do you need to do 
to stay healthy mentally? What do you need to do? Do you need your Zen time? You want to go do your meditation? You want to go do your, your, your yoga? You want to go uh, read a book? You want to go contemplate? You want to go hang out with your buddies? You want to talk to your mom? You want to do whatever? Write it down. Intellectual. Something to stimulate you intellectually, relax you, but mentally to be intellectually stimulated. I want to read this book, this text. I want to listen to this lecture. I want to listen to Sheikh Hamza, may Allah bless him, or any other teachers. Okay, so I want to read this X, Y, Z. Okay? Now, okay, 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 okay. Good. We're moving forward. Now, Bismillah. Now, here is, I want you to put... Here is something very important. Now we're taking these boxes and perforating them in half. No, not this one. Perforating them in half. And now, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we are writing the bare minimum. The bare minimum. And when I mean the bare minimum, I mean like I'm going to floss one tooth. <laughs> the bare minimum. And this, you're going to hang this up. And you're not going to go to sleep before doing the bare minimum. I don't care if it's one push-up. I'm serious. I am very serious. And I want you to write such a low number, you think you can't write anything lower. I'm serious. Don't be like, well, my bare minimum, I want to make it high. No. You pray of the devil. No. I want you to write a low minimum number. Okay, so Quran, my bare minimum number. Okay, I'm going to read, okay, two pages. You know, I am going to do two rakahs. I am going to do ten push-ups. I am going to do ten la ilaha illallah, ten salawat, ten astaghfirullah. I am gonna I am gonna read I'm gonna call my mom. That's my intellectual exercise and, and dad. We forget dads. Alright, my time is up guys. Okay. Bismillah. So I have to call my mom and we forget dads because it's your mom, your mom, your mom, and then your dad, right? So we forget dads. Right? Now, write the bare minimum. Go ahead, fill that out, please. Write that down. Okay? Now, Bismillah, our last box. And remember, I didn't fill out these dreams because if you don't know your own dreams, uh, take a moment and figure them out. Okay? But this last box, it says contract. And this comes from the Islamic tradition of our civilization. And this is how we build habits and grow. And, and the steps are... مشارطة مراقبة مشاهدة معاقبة four steps okay number one you're going to choose one habit that you want to make or break and this is going to be your contract with yourself okay and we're going to make a contract and we're going to think about the consequence if the contract is breached now, I'm going to give you advice on how to choose the consequence, because it's very important, the remedies and how to cure the contract, the breach of contract. So, first of all, the contract, step one, we said, musharata. Okay? Musharata, you make a contract. What is it? I commit to calling my mom, because you know what? I have an unhealthy relationship with her. I'm going to call my mom every day. Think of a habit you need to make or break. I am going to, you know, pray Fajr on time. I'm going to X, Y, Z. Think of a habit you need to make or break. My time is up. I have 60 seconds. Commit to this contract. I am going to X. Number two is muraqaba. So number one, I will X. Number two is monitor yourself. That's step number two. Number three is mushahada, witness God. Witness God. Because that's, that's what everything is about. Mushahada. I'm going to write that in, 
Arabic letters, transliteration. Witness God. He's, he's observing you. And number four, this is the important part, mu'aqaba, the punishment for breaches. Now, you have to choose what that is right now. For example, no coffee for the day. The punishment is very important because it can't be too severe and it can't be too easy. It has to just sting a little bit. Because if it's too severe, you're not going to do it. And if it's too easy, then it has no impact, no effect, no consequence. So you have to choose something that's going to sting a little bit. I'm going to donate $100 to Zaytuna College. I'm serious. Wallahi, I'm serious. This is just for Ramadan. You can continue it after. But you're going to do this just for Ramadan. So maximum, you miss your goal every day, you donate $3,000. Or maybe it's donate $20 to Zaytuna College. Maybe you're really rich, it's donate $1,000, whatever. Okay? But you have to think of something that stings a little bit. No coffee for one hour when I wake up, because, you know, beyond that, it's too severe. Okay? No coffee for the first hour when I wake up, or something like that. Okay, so think of the punishment, the mu'aqabah, and do this and train yourself. Because the greatest enemy is in between your own two sides, it's called our ego. According to our Prophet And this is our Ramadan roadmap on how to be a wali. May Allah make all of us awliya, right? And our soul is going to continue on after we die. When we leave our money behind us, when we leave our looks, we leave the mirrors, when we leave our friends and we leave our family, we're gonna take our soul with we're gonna take our soul with us. And so we're here to beautify our heart and we ask Allah for victory and we ask Allah for openings and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this gathering. And we ask Allah to bless the organizers and to give them openings and victories. And we ask Allah to Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to answer all of our dua, Ya Allah. Say Ameen. Ameen. Ya Allah, we witness and acknowledge you are near and you hear and you answer the one who calls you, the caller who calls you. And we are calling you with this desperation. And we know you are the only one who can fulfill our needs. And all we offer you, a bunch of neediness, a bunch of brokenness, a bunch of mistakes, a bunch of sins, a bunch of arrogance, a bunch of vanity, a bunch of envy, a bunch of ugliness, a bunch of backbiting. Ya Latif. And we ask you to exchange it for us with a bunch of generosity and a bunch of mercy and a bunch of love. Allah, how amazing are you, Ya Allah. Thank you for inviting us to Islam. Thank you for sending us Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring aid to the Ummah this Ramadan. Ameen. And send breezes that carry us forward and give us victory over our own egos. Give us victory over shaitan and the whispering devil. And give us the ability to see to see clarity in this time of confusion. Ameen. And to see truth as truth and follow it and see falsehood as falsehood and protect us from it. And we ask you for everything good, Ya Allah, that our teacher, our beloved teacher, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he asked you for. And we seek protection from every harm that our teacher, our beloved Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he sought protection from. And send peace and blessings on him and his family and his companions and, and all of those who follow him until the last day. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.